Welcome, my child, to the church. Please, sit where you please. Oh, forgive me for the rather dim lighting. Here. Why, yes, I'm the cleric adept here. Please call me Nicole. It is rather dark out. Not many people come in this late, as they have better things to do. <laughs> I am not jealous of that by any means. I accept that the church takes a backseat in this more modern world of ours. However, the needy will always have a place here, no matter who they are or were when they step through the doors. Your skepticism is noted. Among the charlatans, the greedy, the ill-possessed, and the evil, there is this church, innocuous to all but the most desperate. And it is with a heavy heart that the desperate are a great tide that comes to this church. <sighs> My heart breaks for every soul that steps in here. I have seen you before, you know. A quiet individual, walking from merchant stall to merchant stall in search of something. I am not quite sure what. But I never thought that you would find your way here to my church. Uh, please, would you tell me what you seek? While I can be limited in what I can offer, I at least can offer my assistance to you. Ah, uh, I see. You are searching for food and something for your... girlfriend. I see. And you could not afford anything in the market. I see, I see. Do you have anything of theirs on you? Ah, you do. A picture of them. Excellent. Come with me, my dear. Yes, trust me. Approach the altar. Yes, it's perfectly safe, my child. The church is empty, but even were it full of people, no one would judge you in any respect. Merely bow your head. I have heard your wish, and I can grant you it. Ah, there you go. Food for the hungry. The photo? Oh, yes. It is gone, isn't it? I wouldn't be worried. All magic has its price. Even holy magic such as this. Deities of light and protection are the kindest with their prices, however. Unlike dark, evil gods, the deity I pray to is kind and merciful. She raised me out of the gutter after I found myself there. No, oh, but then I'd have to go into my life story. And you shouldn't have to listen to it. However, I think, on this night, such an occasion might be in order. You see, when I was a young girl, no more than five, my parents found out that I had a connection to holy magic. The most coveted in their eyes. Healing magic. They had me heal their injuries no matter how severe or superficial. They had me heal everyone that I came in contact with that had anything wrong with them, or anything that was perceived to be wrong with them. One day, a girl was dragged into our old church. She didn't like boys, you see. She liked girls. And the preacher ordered me to heal her of it. I was so afraid, but everyone was staring at me, so expectant of me. I reached out my hands, and I performed the healing magic upon her. It didn't work. No matter how many times they forced me to try to heal her of what they called her wicked desires, I couldn't. Healing magic doesn't work like that. 
But no matter how many times I begged, pleaded with them to stop, they forced me to continue into exhaustion. I remember feeling tired, dazed, and so unstable on my feet. Then I blacked out and awoke in the gutter. They threw me out because I could not heal a girl of her love. I never found out what happened to the poor girl. I wandered, weak and toneless, for days. Then one day, I left the city and entered into the woods just beyond the wall. And there, I met her, the deity that gifted me with my holy magic. She healed me, gave me food and drink, and taught me how to control and to grow my power. How to use my magic for more than just the healing and inflicting of wounds. I learned about the soul, how mine was whittled away by that day. The soul and a connection to a deity allows for holy magic to be cast, and it was by the grace of that deity that I didn't die. And then she taught me one final lesson and sent me back into the city. I found the false preacher, using the names of the deities in vain and in false pretense. I cleansed his soul in holy fire and rent it from his body. I watched as his body futilely tried to live without the power of his soul, and I watched as it crumbled to dust. My holy mission completed, I found my own church here in the poorer districts. I built it up, little by little, until it became the shining example before you today. Now, 15 years after the preacher's end, and the needy and the lost come to me, and I give them the assistance that they need. <laughs> the goddess whom I serve. Her name is Nithya, the goddess of light and love. Oh, uh, yes, she's also the goddess of obsession. But it's not like that. Obsession isn't evil, not inherently. When focused, when harnessed, it can be a tool for good. And it has. I have carefully tended to this church, to the people who come here, and I have made them better than before. And those evil charlatans and greedy false priests, they help feed the multitude, their tainted souls, purified by the holy fire my goddess grants me, and taken to do truly good deeds. That is the mission given to me, and I have followed it faithfully. And when I saw you, with her, I saw and I felt obsession gnaw at me like a starving hound. I wanted you to be mine. I thought that it was wrong of me. So wrong at first. And I prayed for a sign. I prayed for guidance. And my goddess appeared, heard my plight, and she gave me counsel. She told me to wait for you here. And I have waited. And you've come. Just as she said you would. You are so pretty. The rags that you wear could not hide your divinity from my gaze. Mortal, though we both may be, before me I see a queen of all. I see my goddess's most beautiful creation. But you are lost before, lost in the dark out there, lost in her your so-called girlfriend, the vicious poison that she gave you to blind you to the true path, blind you to me. The way she clung to you, it sickened me. She was evil, vile and deranged, not even a human, but a demon in disguise, a soul so tainted that the holy fire had to burn bright and hot for it to be cleansed. But it is done, it is cleansed, and it has been useful. Yes, I rent her soul from her horrid corpse, 
and I have used it for you. Uh, no, 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 darling. You're not leaving. You're staying here with me. Your, your beautiful eyes, they swim with tears. You are in pain. It's because of her poison. It still exists within you, but this I can help with. This I can heal. Kneel, darling. Kneel. I said kneel. Shh, I know, baby, I know. It hurts a lot, and it will hurt a lot worse soon. But you will be so much better than before. I will cleanse your soul, too. Take it. Darling, no. No, I won't. You are too precious to me. But I will purify it. I will purify you. I will take your soul, and I will burn out the horrible poison she slipped into you. It will hurt. It will be painful. And for this I am sorry. I am sorry. But it must be done. In the name of our goddess, be cleansed. My love, shh. You are alive. Yes, alive. Your soul is pure and clean again. You are mine now. Mine forever and ever. <laughs>